I finished up my morning run and I got back to the house and I started throwing a tantrum. I don't know how many of you guys have done that before, but I felt this deep, deep feeling inside of me that I was inside of a rut. I felt like life wasn't moving. I felt like I was complacent and all that came to fruition after a morning 10 miler. I walked in the door, threw a little tantrum, and said, hey, we gotta fucking pack up. We gotta move, we gotta get out of here. And I was talking to my wife. I looked up at her and I said that, and she looked back at me and she said, let's do it. We sold the house, we liquidated everything. We either threw our items out or we put a small few things into storage and we packed up and we left Colorado and hit the road. I'm Jeremiah Sullivan. I'm the founder of Conquer Academy, which is a leadership high-performance coaching company. But I'm also a former vet. I was an Army infantry officer, company commander. I served in the 75th Ranger Regiment. I was a platoon leader there. And I'm a fitness enthusiast. I've done things like 103-mile race and some MMA cage fighting. I like hard shit. And um, I decided to put this channel together because I wanted to help as many people as possible transform their mindset so they can achieve their desired life. People are tiptoeing their way through life to safely arrive at death. And uh, I wanted to be maybe a source of inspiration, share some lessons learned that can help just one person live a more audacious life. In this video, what I'm gonna cover is why I made the decision to sell, get rid of everything and hit the road. I'm gonna talk about what it was like after we made the decision. I'm gonna talk about some things that I've learned, talk about what we're doing now, and then I'm gonna answer questions that were sent in to me on Instagram and Facebook, really to lay out some tips that might help you to hit the road and do something audacious. First thing, why I made the decision. How many of you guys have you know, woke up one day and just felt like you were in an absolute rut, felt the mundane of life. You felt this emptiness inside of you. You, you know, you're looking at everything around you and your results are starting to feel more and more the same. And at one point in life, maybe you started having, you had massive growth. And then all of a sudden you, you did something bold. You started living and you know, over time, what you did to get where you're currently at became normal. And then you started feeling complacent. You essentially put yourself into a rut across time. So it was one of those days, you know, I, I was feeling like we were in a bit of a rut. My wife was too. And I knew that I needed to mix it up. I knew I needed to bring in some variety into my life. And we thought that completely mixing everything up would be a great way to change everything up, you know, mentally as well. So after I came in from that run, that morning run, it was like a 10 miler out in Colorado Springs. And we said, Hey, you know, let's burn it all down. Let's take off. We thought, thought that things were going to go a lot smoother than they went. We still needed to list our house and we still needed to pack, put things, some things into storage and inside of our head, that was a smooth process. But what really happened is we encountered obstacle after obstacle after obstacle. And this was an important part of something that we learned along the way. Whenever you try to do a bold maneuver in life, try to do something that requires courage, it requires you to do something to really mix it up. You decide to take that first step. You know, life is going to kick your ass. It's going to push back. And I believe that it does this for a couple of reasons. One reason is that it's building you to becoming more resilient. Whatever you're trying to do next in life, it's a new level. And so you're gonna need a new level of toughness, mental toughness and resilience in order to operate at that, that next level, right? So I think life wants to make you tougher for the next level. The other reason why I think that encountering resistance after you make a decision to do something different and, and make that bold maneuver happens is because life wants to test your desire. We don't live in a world, it's not a crazy enough place to reward a bunch of undeserving people. And so life is constantly testing you to see if you're gonna become deserving of getting what you want. And how easy would it be if there was no resistance on your way out to making change? Everybody would just continue to level up and level up and level up. But the reality is, in order to break free of the current level that you're at, life is gonna push back. And it does that because it's gonna test your desire to see if that's truly, truly what you want and see if you're gonna work your ass off to become deserving of what you're gonna get at the next level. That's my personal opinion and that's my belief on it. People that are not driven to hit that next level, they don't have the desire, they're gonna fade out at that first sign of resistance. That's the reality. That's one thing that I learned 
after we made the decision. So what we're currently doing is we left Colorado and we're down in Texas. We stopped over, saw some relatives and then came down to Houston. I'm just currently here for maybe another week and then we're gonna head back out and we're gonna go to California. I'm gonna do some family stuff out there. We were faced with a challenge when we decided to sell everything and move and hit the road. We, we, we needed to know whether or not we were gonna pick like an RV and go live in an RV for six months to a year or whether we were going to do Airbnbs over and over again. So on our first leg of the trip, down here in Houston, we decided that we would try out and test out doing Airbnb full time. And there was a lot of pros and cons to that. You know, the cons that it's a little bit more expensive at face value. Pros was that logistically it made a lot more sense and it was easier. Con, we were worried about our dogs. Pro, we actually found a place that, that facilitated um, the living of our dogs really easily. They have a big, it has a big yard and, you know, great air conditioning and it was, it's a great place to live. So what we're doing, what we're currently doing now is we're traveling around doing Airbnbs and really picking places that we have friends in and family in and there's good quality mixed martial arts gyms in. That's one of my goals for this trip is to pick great gyms to train at, meet great people and just broaden my network. Additionally, what we're doing, I work, uh, I mentioned before, you know, I'm an entrepreneur and I have a coaching company. My, my coaching company is ran virtually. So I'm working from my cell phone and my laptop seven days a week, just like I did back up in, in Colorado. Now, let me answer some common questions that you guys sent into me to help you out on your journey on doing the next bold maneuver in your life. What's the biggest challenge you encountered and how did you overcome it? The first challenge was that when we left Colorado, we were in our car with the three dogs fully packed heading down to Houston we had an Airbnb reserved and it fell through it fell through literally on the route down to Houston so we were a couple hours out from checking in when that reservation fell through and we had to basically jump back online and find a place that worked and fit our needs luckily there was you know there's two of us we were driving driving along and my wife was able to pull up Airbnb and see what was available. And we found something, found a great deal in a great spot. How are you creating an effective work environment? And does your current environment throw off your productivity and how to avoid it? Really, this is a two-part question. So how, do, how are you creating an effective work environment? What I'm doing here down in Houston is similar to what I do up in Colorado. I'm a big believer in getting up early. You know, a lot of people complain about their work environment. They complain about their kids. They complain about their spouse being in the house, the house being too busy. And they complain about all the uncontrollables instead of the controllable, which the controllable that you can fix to have a great work environment is your wake up time. So for me, that's what I've been focusing on. I, I do all my heavy lifting, heavy work, my deep work early in the morning, and I just get up early. Worst case scenario, I just get up super, super early. Maybe I'm a little bit tired later on, I could take a nap and then get back to work. That's how I'm deconflicting a busy work environment is I just get up early when I want my alone time and that solves the problem. The second part to that question was, does your current environment throw off your productivity and how do you avoid that? It, it really doesn't. The, the, the thing that throws off my productivity is the time zone change. It takes a while for my body to get used to the new time time zone. And what I found is that regardless of time, don't let the time zone dictate what time you get up. Don't allow the, the jet lag, so to speak. Don't allow the adjustment period that you think you need to dictate what time you get up and what shit you get done. I'm a big believer. Just wake up early. Even if you're not adjusted to the time zone, get as much shit done as possible and then go about your day. So you know, my answer to that question is the trip and moving and time zone changes does throw off your productivity if you let it. So you just got to assert yourself, get up at a reasonable time, regardless of the time zone change, regardless of whether or not it makes logical sense. Just fucking get up, get your shit done. What gear packing tips do you have for hitting the road? Good question. First couple things, whenever I travel, I take this. This is my, this is like probably the best 10 bucks I've ever spent for running equipment. It's a fanny pack and it goes around my waist. I put my phone in there and uh, I also cook a knife onto the outside of it for when I'm running around neighborhoods. So that's really good gear packing tip. Bring a fanny pack with you for your cardio. Gear packing tip number two is, you know, bring a knife. You know, I bring a knife with me everywhere I go. It makes me feel more secure. Also, if I'm out in a run and things go south, I got that on me. Gear packing tip number three. Uh, I don't know if YouTube will ban me for this, but it's my Glock, you know, carrying around my Glock. I take that everywhere I go. Gear Packing tip number four, I highly recommend some shorts and shirts that you can just wash inside of the sink or the shower. That's one of my favorite things to do when I travel. I wear a pair of shorts that I can just jump in the shower with. I can wash them with some soap, wring them up, hang them out to dry. The next day they're ready to go. So that minimizes the amount of, of clothing that I need to pack. Additionally, those type of shorts, they don't really take up a whole lot of space. And the same thing for the shirts. So find shirts 
and shorts that you can wash uh, in the bathroom and hang up to dry. Next question, are you happy with the decision? Yeah, absolutely. One of the reasons why we decided to hit the road was to embrace freedom, to feel more free. I think everybody wants to feel more free in life. However, there was a time when I finished a run here in Houston, I walked in the door and I caught myself feeling less free still. And I, I noticed that I was saying, oh, Jeremiah, you're going to feel more free once you get to the next spot. You just don't feel free right here, right now. And I noticed that I'm, I started projecting and I started saying, okay, when you get to California, you're going to feel more free. Or when you get to this leg of the journey that you have in your head, you're going to feel more free. And I was like, hold up, what the hell are you saying? Why can't you just feel free right now? I've learned through this experience that feeling free is a choice. It's not a destination. It's a state of being. So it's important that we stop looking for the grass to be greener on the other side. And we realize the grass is greener right where you water it. And I'm definitely guilty of, of the inverse of that. Additionally, I do believe that the level of freedom you feel is proportional to your destination. I know that sounds contradictory, but it's true. If you're stuck in a nine to five, it's not possible for you to feel hundred percent free. So I think that your environment does play a factor in how free you feel. And you just need to become aware of that and start making decisions that align you with more freedom later on, a destination that's gonna make you feel more free. Next question, what does a nomadic budget look like? This is an interesting question. So we're still within the first month of this trip, but what I'll, I'll tell you what we're experiencing right now. We're looking at about $3,000 a month for you know living expenses, essentially, right? Not food and, food and stuff like that, but just housing. But 3,000 is not that bad when you think about all the things that come with it. You're not paying for trash, you're not paying for water, you're not paying for electricity, you're not paying for the Wi-Fi. You know, you're not paying for parking. I don't know if you pay for parking where you live. But either way, what I'm saying is that $3,000 a month is an all-inclusive package for where you're going to stay, right? You don't have to buy any household items, cleaning items, things like that, toilet paper, paper towels. So all that stuff is absorbed. And um, I think $3,000 a month is pretty fair, especially if you get a place that can house, you know, your family, your kids. It's not too bad. Next question. Why'd you pick Airbnbs? I thought you were going to get an RV. We're currently testing out the Airbnb process, and that's because logistically the RV sounded like a headache. And if we chose to live in an RV, we're going to be away from the downtown areas in most of the big cities. And a lot of the gyms that I wanted to train at were in the downtown area. So that was going to increase the commute to and from gyms, which are a big part of you know my structure in the day. So we decided, hey, you know what? We'll just test out Airbnbs. We'll see how this goes. We'll see what the pricing looks like. And then we'll make the decision on whether or not we buy an RV. So the short answer for that question is it was a logistics decision. It's a lot simpler to manage just hopping from Airbnb to Airbnb. Next question, your favorite hidden gem grocery stores. Here's I'll talk hidden gem food tips and tricks. Okay. First thing is that every store has like fruits, blueberries and strawberries are something you can get pretty much everywhere. I take that and I mix it with a protein powder that I like and put some walnuts in there. That's a great breakfast meal. You know, you can put some peanut butter in there and some other things. That's a go-to smoothie for traveling. The next thing is that I've been all over this company, Battle Bars, and they do high quality protein bars that don't have any sugars in them and they're they're good for you and they're not candy bars like a lot of other protein bars that are out there. So I've been using those quite a bit for on the road. The third tip for groceries are these things my wife found, which are called, they're basically made for you meals. They're called simple meals. They come in a little package. They're basically a food prep type meal. They have salmon, potatoes, asparagus in there. And uh, she found those to be, really great for the price that they charge and they get them she, get them. she gets them at a local grocery store here. Next question. Are you nuts? You're taking this trip. Are you nuts? Yeah, I'm a little bit crazy, but I found a way to make it work for me. <laughs> what comforts do you think you'll miss the most by hitting the road and getting rid of everything? You know, there's a certain satisfaction that comes from a structured routine, you know, your regular friends, the familiarity of the life that you build in an area. And I think that that's probably the thing that I'll miss the most. Those things do feed into the monotony of life. They do bring a lot of value. And what I keep telling myself is that those things aren't going away. They still exist. And I can just go back to Colorado and go touch them, go feel them, go experience them, and enjoy them if I want to. What's the end game for this journey? To be completely honest, I'm a big planner. I'm a big preparer. And I'm using this trip to just wing it, to be completely honest. You know, we have six months. We have a year kind of floating around in our head for how long we'll be doing this. But we'll see. We're going to kind of base it off of the experience, right? Because there might be a point where we say, hey, you know, we're burnt out on this or, you know, we want to do this longer. Who knows? So for right now, we're going to just kind of take it as it comes. All right. Final tips. Here's some tips from my wife. My wife says when you're traveling and you're making a bold maneuver, doing something audacious that requires courage and you're trying you're getting nervous about it. Remind yourself what's the worst that can happen. I thought that was really reasonable. It sounds like no shit. Duh. But 
really, really embody that. It's true. What's the worst that can happen? We're not going to end up homeless under a bridge. Like that's a, that's a very slippery slope, right? The worst thing that's going to happen is we go out, we experience it for a month, two months, three months. We say, you know what? We have to get another place, right? We just go get another place. Pretty easy. Tip number two for my wife. She says, bring your Chromecast. She said, <laughs> when you go to Airbnb, bring your Chromecast. That way you can watch your favorite shows. You can connect to the television and uh, just a great little tip. She said to bring that along. Tip number one for me is trust your imagination because the how always shows up. You might not know how you're going to make this big maneuver, this big step, right? You might not know how you're going to get rid of all your stuff and, and how you're going to hit the road and how you're going to get the Airbnb. You might not have all the answers, but if you just imagine what the end result is going to be like and you can picture it, the how is going to take care of itself. So I think too many people get caught up in the how. They don't get caught up enough in using their imagination to think about the experience that they want to create and have. So I found that to be very valuable, right? Just trust your imagination because where you're at right now is a product of your imagination, whether you believe that or not. It's true. Tip number two for me is you can't solve your current problems with the same level of thinking that create them. If you're experiencing similar problems in your life over and over and over and again, this is going on for months, years, and there's no breakout, break free. You got to change your thinking. And the way you change your thinking is you change up everything in your life, change up your experience. You get new information, you get enlightened, you get new ideas, and you can start seeing the world differently because your perspective changes. So you want to expand your mind and, and really traveling and getting out of, of Colorado this last month has done that for me a lot. Mike. In fact, I'm I'm catching myself challenging a lot of things that I believe that I was going to be committed to that I was going to do and that, you know, where, where my focus was prior to leaving. I'm seeing a lot, seeing the entire world differently. I'm seeing myself differently. And through all that, my perspective is changing to the point where I can almost feel my brain expanding. And there was a point on the last week where I said, Hey man, I'm getting so much new information. I need to slow down and just kind of consolidate my thoughts for a minute. That way I can make an informed decision on what's next. Once your mind gets exposed to a new idea it never goes back to the original form. And there's a lot of value in that. So if you're experiencing the same problems over and over again, go expand your mind, change it up, mix it up, get out, do something different. I hope you found value in this. I hope you learned something. I heard you either whether that was a tip a packing strategy, uh, maybe you just got inspired and it's going to cause you to take a little action step that you've been, you know, sitting on and not doing. But either way, hit subscribe if you're not already and follow us along on this journey. I'll see you guys in the comments.